you know, in some sense. I think if we, if, you know, if, if we ask ourselves, like, what ultimately is, is real to us? Right? What is the most real to us? And I don't, I don't mean that like a scientific or, or necessarily even a, like a philosophical question, but just how we live in the world day to day. What, what do we, what do we in that living, the eating and talking and sitting and walking and farting and working, all these very basic day-to-day, -day apparently unmysterious things, and I say apparently, what, what is it that's ultimately, like, in that sense, what do we reveal in terms of what we take as to be what is real and it, and it seems to me that we got to at least consider relationship right oh that's cool here the walking by this house there's a it's kind of epic classical music going on in this house I'll point it. See right there. So I hear this classical music and I turn towards it and I'm like immediately in this relationship with this house that I've walked past 8,000 times, but it showed itself to me through this relationship. But even just, you know, if, even if we just look at it in terms of just coming in to uh, being in the world, right? In some sense, in some sense, our transparency to that we are comes about having already the very fact of ourselves having already been. <laughs> See, there's a there's something to that that's so so unendlessly interesting to me, and I don't I can't I don't even know why exactly. There's something to this that very sense in which one becomes aware of who the what the, the way one is already always in relationship to that which it's related. <laughs> like, I think it's this kind of this sense of like, there's somehow that the origin of that memory is, I, it, it's just this sense. I don't know if it's, I don't know if I have a memory of this, but there's a sense in which I remember, how I was all like a little kid. I'm just, Going along, right? My taco, like my taco toys and my, like playing, you know, Space Invaders and Star Wars or something at my grandpa's house. And like, I'm like just in the midst of, I don't know, the embeddedness of my particular world. And I just have this vague sense of like, kind of, this very real sense of kind of coming to, right? Like all of a sudden just kind of opening up to somehow catching that I'm here. Right, some recognition of like, a, without it, without it being, without the whole being revealed to me, as in, the object in front of me, but somehow the whole sees itself for a second. 
and and there's this strange there's a strange way where I think existentialists talk about this a lot, right? Where one <laughs> one one's 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 waking up to already running, right? And the consciousness, right, of the act is somehow after the fact and, and the embeddedness in that fact. And then, like, you could say that's like the sentience. And then one becomes consentient of that, conscious of the sentience, right? Self-conscious. Because I think, and I think one of the things that just, it is so striking to me about that particular thing is that one, that's always happening. That's always the case, right? It's not like, it's not like that was the case the first time. Like there was this, this moment, right? And then ever since then, I've been like, like the open eye, self-consciously aware, directing myself like a machine, like, or something. No. <laughs> no. Every single moment is, in some sense, you can always find yourself already always already having begun now what you know what's interesting is that I do think and I don't don't know if, if this is talked about much I, it, or if I'm aware of it being talked about much yet there is something about when one becomes transparent to that and glimpses it and then comes back into what they're embedded into. Well, it's not like they ever left either because in some sense, the I would imagine when you become, when you step back out of your experience and you observe, the ground of that observation is just a, it's a ground into something else in which it's already begun. <laughs> Right, so it's like through and through. There is this kind of vanishing point, right? That you can never get ahead of. But in some sense, that there is a vanishing point. And what that vanishing point both reveals, but mostly conceals from you. It's the recognition of that concealment. It's that concealment that's revealed that is the part I think I'm talking about. You know, and perhaps this is what You know, now I'm sensing this deeper conversation, this deeper conversation about death, right? This kind of sense in which our walks have been <laughs> talking to themselves about the particular time that we're in in the West is, is that it, what we may be inside of, right? We may be inside of a kind of death of a whole epoch of intelligibility Maybe it's gone. Maybe it's already died, right? And we're, in some sense, you could say, in the dimming light of a star that's already burnt out. God, that's really such a, that's a, quite an image, isn't it? And, and again, like trying to make sense of the time that you're in is, 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 is perhaps one of the most difficult things in the world, right? It's trying to like, somehow it's connected to this thing I'm talking about, of finding yourself already begun. Because in some sense, you know, like we can abstract out that like I'm somehow different and I can talk about the time we're in, but what is it to be immortal in time? And what is it to have one's origin and one's end? To be always the vanishing point of the present, right? 
Like in every sense, there's a, there is a way in which... Now, I'm not talking about our... I mean, as Heidegger would say, your ontic death. Or your... your the sense of a timeline of your literal birth and your level, like the, the, the straight line from your birth to your demise. But more of the ontological sense in which in some sense death and birth are the very origins of the way in which every single moment unfolds as the moment that it is. And that, that us as humans being mortal, God, what does that mean in that case? To be mortal. Because it's interesting, like if you think about your being immortal, you're immortal from the moment you're born. You're, what was immortal was, bo was born, right? So, so the, there's this way the end is present from the, from the very beginning, just like I would imagine the first note of, of the music is present from the very beginning. God, it's so weird how, like, I keep getting these, like, waves of the, these, the kind of hits of, of realizing somehow the trance of the time I was born into and just kind of having moments where I wake up from it because it just seems seems like something I it's like I consider myself in some way the time I was born out of is something like a secular humanist um, I don't know a secular humanist liberal or something like that or what just seems so obvious and self-evident was actually a covering over of seeing something so in front of my face. But I think this is kind of what that does, right? Like, to in some sense feel the presence, the presence, right, is in some way revealed through an ongoing relation, like a relationship with somebody, right? Their presence, you can't, you can't really reduce, in fact, in some ways, like, like counting up the facts of that, about that person, like one does on a dating site or something like that doesn't at all reveal, obviously does not reveal the presence of that person. No, one comes to know who the other is as one is related. One, I guess you could say, births and dies, spends moments birthing and dying with one. In other words, participating. One, through that participation, the presence of that person becomes, in some sense, what you relate to, what you come to know in that person. Adds other, right? Yet that otherness at the same time is the, ver is the very, the path or the, I don't know, the, you could say the, the way in which, the process by which the coming to know that person's otherness, right, was the very process of access to that otherness, which in sense was their, like their otherness was in, in some sense the access point to the, to you, which is strange to say because it's other than you, right? I don't know, somehow, somehow, there's a way in which the world itself if we can, if we can break, I don't know, somehow relieve ourselves from the secular humanist 
libertarian trance or something, one can come to recognize what is of <laughs> the, the way one is, I guess. there's also this way you know on, on, in another way you can in a relationship you can recognize the otherness of the person but you can't really sum the other you know to, to, to be able to you can't boil someone down into a set of words that's in some sense to know is not to know them in fact, that's exactly like when you when you get into a fight with somebody and you you are certain about your position and and their position and how their position is wrong and like you're almost most of the time you're not actually <laughs> you've just turned the person into an it and and of course in relationships that ends up really hurting most of the time and that pain right reveal something right it, 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 that uh, what I say the fact that that hurts I think reveals in some sense a break or a betrayal right of in some way mistaking the person for your concept or reducing the person into a conceivable point of reference that you can somehow possess or know for certain but then when that then when that that, that restores right and like you're, there's forgiveness there or you kind of break and you realize that and you come back together you're like oh there you are oh my god i wasn't even seeing you so there is this relationship between if ineffability and somehow recognizing the otherness of the other, the person of the other. And there's something about that I-thou relationship that seems to be almost a symbolic, almost like can, can be like a living symbol for some, like your relation, almost like the relationship with the, the whole in some way. But in the way that the whole is present, but as concealed, but there's a way in which you can relate to that concealed wholeness that is of high quality and reveals the conceal, the con it's, it's concealment without, without um, making it unconcealed. And I think we do that. I think we do practice that, right? In moments of real intimacy, relationships in which we're genuinely close to people. We're genuinely related to them, right? We, I think we, I think we, um, we'll say substantiate that symbol. And in some sense, it maybe becomes a symbol. And that's why it's so important in my relationships really when it comes down to it is what I think constitutes reality for us at the end of the day. At least that's, man, you know, it, 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 at least it's the thing that people on their deathbeds have gratitudes and regrets about, right? Like, you, you don't really hear about people on their deathbed, you know, saying they wish they worked more or something, right? That they had more shit made more money or something like that usually the stuff we're consumed by about when we're alive if actually when we're there's something about at one's death one becomes present to that their whole life was in some sense about this opportunity to be with the inconceivable right 
but that inconceivability of what I, in some sense, can, I can have degrees of intimacy with. But not by some kind of, I don't know, weird scientism of total objectivity or something. But it's actually... this vanishing point but the vanishing point doesn't push me away or out but pulls me toward but it pulls me toward without it without it stopping being a vanishing point that's the that's the that's the part <laughs>